Hey folks, welcome back to another video with yours truly, Sam Healy. Today is not a review, it is actually a top five list. Now, it's not a top ten list because couldn't really make one on the category that I wanted to talk about. So, today I'm going to be doing my top five games with dwarves. Now, I'm a real fan of dwarves. Gimli is my favorite character from Lord of the Rings. Uh, I've, I've just always enjoyed, from my days playing D&D, &D, uh, back in the day, uh, to just whatever games that I play now. If I see that a game has a dwarf in it, I'm really excited about it. I, I, I don't know what it is. I just like their personalities, I guess you could say, minus the drinking part, of course. Uh, I like a lot of the different things about dwarves, so when a game has a dwarf in it, I'm usually pretty cool with it. Depends. Of course, it always depends on whether or not I like the game, of course, but having a dwarf in it, being able to take on the persona of a dwarf within a game, those are all things that I enjoy. Now, with that being said, caveat is, is that these are five games that I think are top-notch of games that I have played that have dwarves in it, all right? So, if I don't mention a game that immediately pops into your head, it's probably because... I just haven't played it. But go ahead and mention it in the comments anyway. Three uh, honorable mentions, so to speak. That is, uh, first of all, there's one called Gym Rush by Victory Point Games where each person takes on the persona of a dwarf and they're going into this cave to try to get the best gems that are in that cave. I just wasn't too thrilled with the gameplay. Uh, the theme was neat, but the gameplay just didn't really hit it for me. Another one was Taverna. That just came out last year, I believe. And uh, it was a cool game. I enjoyed it. had great artwork. But uh, to me, dwarves were just kind of a currency in the game. You didn't get to take on the persona of a dwarf or anything like that. So um, that just kind of fell by the wayside. As far as this list is concerned, I still enjoyed the game. And then another one was Descent. I've really enjoyed Descent over the years. But uh, with Descent, it was uh, the dwarves were just kind of... There were a couple of them, I believe. Uh, as far as characters you could be as you're going through the dungeon crawl. Um, and they were nondescript, I guess you could say. I wasn't, uh, I mean, it was cool that they were included, but I just wasn't, well, wow, cool, that type of thing. So uh, those are three honorable mentions for the list. But hey, let's get to the top five. All right, my number five for this list is a game that I really enjoyed over the past few years, and, and, and it's one of those gateway games for me. I know a lot of people have said that it's not really gateway to game for them. It's a little bit too, uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, I don't know, just too many rules, I guess you could say. Eh, phooey. I've had a great amount of success with this game as a gateway game, and that is Small World. Small World has uh, just basically one faction, but that one faction of dwarves can take on a number of different um, uh, special abilities and it's some of them are entirely comical and some of them are just well yeah that's what it should be so uh, small world is a game that I have enjoyed and whenever the dwarves come up I'm usually trying to get them now the, the thing with dwarves is that they did make the faction kind of um, uh, thematic in that there aren't very many tiles on the actual race board that it provides you for units to conquer on the board with. So um, unless there is a glaring I should really take this race and the dwarves are available I'll usually try to go after them. But again it's number five because the level of involvement that the dwarves have in this game is minuscule to add best. It's just one of many races that you can be in Small World, but still a great game and it does include dwarves. So my number five, Small World. My number four is a game that I have touted since I heard it came out and since I played it. Um, it is one of the more innovative mechanics that are out there in the card drafting. One of the first games that I played that, in, that in, uh, incorporated this card drafting mechanic that a lot of games use now like Blood Rage and, and uh, Seven Wonders and you name it. Card drafting is everywhere nowadays it seems. Uh, but this one is in my mind one of the first ones because it was one of the first card drafting games that I played and that is Fairy Tale. Fairy Tale is a game that actually doesn't have a whole lot of factions, uh, and for some reason the dwarves are part of the fairy faction, which was strange. And on top of that, it uh, has dwarves riding dragons. 
a cool combo, don't get me wrong, but it's just not one that I would normally say, hey, that's what dwarves do. But it's a very cool game, and there are, uh, comparatively speaking, the dwarves take a pretty good role in this because it, they do provide a pretty good combination uh, to score a lot of points in Fairy Tale. So, had to include Fairy Tale because it's one of my favorite games, and then the dwarves are really cool in it. Great artwork. Cool abilities, fairy tale, my number four. My number three is a game that just came out last month, December 2015. And well, I guess it got shipped to its backers, December 15, uh, 2015. And it only has one dwarf in it, but that dwarf rocks, baby. Um, Samson is the man in Zombicide Black Plague. Um, you get two hammers in that dude's hands get his experience points up, and he is a wrecking machine, dude. So, Zombicide Black Plague, probably one of my favorite games of last year. Probably would have made my top 10 had I made that list after that game comp came out from 2015. But Samson in Bl Zombicide Black Plague is the bomb. I want to play him every single time that I play this. Now, of course, I'll be nice and let somebody else play him if they really want to, but if it's my choice, Samson is the man. So, that's my number three, Zombicide Black Plague. My number two is a game that I really have enjoyed with my sons more often than not. The, the, the vast majority of times that I've played this game have been with my sons or my family. I've played it a lot with other people as well, but most of the times that I've played have been with my sons. And that is a game called Summoner Wars from Plaid Hat Games. Really love this game. Always enjoyed it from the first time I played it. Uh, just has a really cool streamlined simplicity about it, about taking your units and moving them and attacking. And you're trying to knock out your other your opponent's summoner before his army knocks out your summoner. And uh, it's just a really simple card placement and then that card represents a unit on the board you move that card around uh, you attack with that card and so forth and so on you, you roll dice to attack so it has a lot of the different things that I'm hitting on but those go those uh, dwarves are cool and they have a couple of different uh, factions of dwarves in there as well which I really like there's some diversity there it's not just the dwarves um, so summoner wars has always been one of my favorite games and I could not help but include it. Hi, Bruce. How you doing, man? How you doing, buddy? So that's my number three. No, I'm sorry. My number two, Summoner Wars from Plat Hat Games. And finally, my number one is a game that I have truly enjoyed, which is kind of strange because it's very similar to another game that I think is heavily overrated, and that is called Agricola. Now this game that I enjoy a lot in which you actually take the dwarf and uh, you are building up his little homestead, so to speak, and you are uh, building up the mine that he works in and, and building up the fields that he gets his food from. And in Caverna, it's very similar in a lot of respects to Agricola, but I think one of the things, just one of the things that I really enjoy about Caverna is the fact that you are a dwarf. Another thing that I really like about it is that you don't have to farm. Yeah, you're going to lose a few points if you don't. Yeah, you're going to lose a few points if you don't have some animals. But you could spend most of your time and have a viable play for a win if you just mine like a dwarf would. Another thing I like about it is the fact that you can go out adventuring and you can find different resources that way. You don't have to just farm for them or just do this or just do that. You can go out and and pick and choose the things that you find on your adventure. So a lot of things that make Caverna uh, one of my favorite games and uh, a really cool dwarf game is just that. It takes dwarfs to a more realistic sense and a less fantastical sense. And it puts you to work doing uh, what a dwarf would do on a normal everyday basis, I guess. And that is Caverna. Those are my top five games with dwarves. I hope you enjoyed the video. Check out the rest of our Dice Tower uh, feed 
And hey, go check out our Kickstarter. It's going on right now. See you on the flip side.